Okay. Welcome everybody. There's not a lot of people, but it's a very big room. So, bah, it's cool. Uh, I'm going to talk about something technical. I hope everything that is still here is able to follow it. But the the goal of the session is to lower the barrier to start do doing test-driven development with Joomla. So even if you don't have the technical level, it's uh, to break that barrier and start creating tests. This is who I am. I'm Roberto Segura. The left side is who I am, and the right side is where I spend time and I should that I should spend in the left side. I'm from Spain. I uh, PHP and JavaScript developer. Uh, I work as freelance and I contribute to Joomla. Uh, I'm a fan of open source and I have a lot of extensions. Uh, all of them are free and open source. Those are my website and my Twitter, and you can follow me there. No, it's not secure, no, because I'm migrating it. <laughs> yeah. So what's TDD? I think the, the screen is not. Oh, OK. Uh, TDD is a way to to program, to, to develop extensions. Well, in this case, Joomla extensions. But it's a global development uh, procedure. So uh, it's quite simple, and I would like you to to see it like a game. I think that's the the way to to make it easier for everybody to to get into. So basically, the the process has three stages. The first one is uh, you write the test, and it's uh, the test files. You you still haven't written any code. And uh, the test files, you describe how the extension or the code should uh, behave. And then with the test, uh, you create the code. So first, it's a failing test, then write the code, then see the test green, this which is passing, and then iterate, 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 until the full feature is developed. Uh, it's especially good. I found it because I'm quite perfectionist. I'm the kind of developer that never ends anything. I will write the perfect product, but never ship it. So uh, this is for procrastinators. I'm two things about in that one. I, I'm the three things. I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. And I'm everyone. No, just one. So uh, I tend to lose a lot of time developing, writing code, because I want, I want to think about all the use cases. And uh, I found that staying with test-driven development, it uh, uh, helps me to focus and to know that I only have to, uh, to solve one problem at a time. At a time. Uh, if you want the defini definition of test-driven development, I'm sure you can find it. So this is the, the benefits of test-driven development. I have told some of them. The best one is that it's, it's fun. It's not because uh, when developers think about uh, tests, uh, they think two things. One is it will slow my development speed. I have to spend time learning how to write tests. And, and the, other is, uh, the other thing is that it's uh, boring or it's, it's not like I have code this, and oh, it's working. See it there. It's, you are the only one that are probably going is probably going to see the test. But uh, uh, if you see it as a game, it's like the first stage is to solve the first problem, then the second stage, the third stage, and like that. It also uh, in the long term it will save you time because you ha will have less bugs and. In the medium, medium time, in the not long term, but medium term, will save you time. It also creates confidence because your software is fully tested, or hopefully fully tested. And uh, you can also use it for continuous integration because the tests are to develop it, to develop it, but also to maintain the code. And you will avoid breaking the 
compatibility. And uh, one of the other benefits I found when creating the test is that uh, you first write the test. So uh, it's like, how I would like as developer to use this class, this method. I would like to name it, oh, this is cool. This is a cool name because I will uh, name it articles. Oh, get ID. Ah, that's a good name. I found that I was finding, I'm finding now better names for the methods and for things like that. Because you, you uh, see your code as a consumer. Uh, you don't need a lot of things to, to start uh, writing tests for your extensions. And the first one is a Joomla CMS clone that I'm sure that everybody here knows how to do it, or I hope. Uh, then a JSON file to configure Compose. A PHP unit, we will see everything later, but this is a summary. Uh, a PHP unit file that will uh, contain the configuration for our test. And then uh, a bootstrap file that will load everything we need for the test. Uh, there is a, I published yesterday uh, an extension to show it, to so you can check the code and see everything I'm going to talk about in uh, working in an extension. It's there on GitHub, and you can find it. Uh, the first step is to clone the Joomla CMS. I'm sure we don't need to spend a lot of time here. Maybe in the last part, if you are a contributor, you already know how to clone the repository, and then get into the, the folder, and uh, one thing that we really need to know is that you have to run Compose install in your cloned Joomla repository. So all the dependencies for tests and things like that get installed. <coughs> the second step is to create a Compose JSON file in your, in your extension file. This is only the part that needs to be added to your, to your, uh, for, to run the test. But I'm going to show the full file. Yeah. Ah, the, the previous one? This one? OK. Cut pointers, because I'm a procrastinator. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. So let's find the. This is the full file. Basically, is I hope you see. Yeah. Uh, the rest is not interesting. It's just name, things to know where who is the author, the, the dependencies, and in this case, we only need to know the require and the auto load dev to run the test. Uh, actually, that's that's wrong. This is the this is the wrong namespace, but you will see that test run. So this is the full file, but it's a JSON file that uh, Composer created. So I mean, if you already have a Composer file, you only have to add those parts. The test, the dependency to run PHP unit, and it has to be that version. It, it has to be that version because uh, Joomla still does not support things like PHP unit 6 or future. Uh, it has to be exactly that version. And the, the script is just to run test in a faster way. So you can run test like this. Composer test. That's the, the script that you, we just added, and test get executed. But uh, you don't really need it. You can run it with vendor. Uh, sorry. Vendor being PHP unit. The, the previous is an alias of this. So it's the same. Mm. Then uh, once we create the extension with that Composer file, we have to also install uh, Composer in, in our extension. This is the PHP unit file. Uh, when I started to, I didn't write test, but when I started to search how to do it, uh, I mainly did what I recommend you to do. This is still, still code. Uh, look who is doing uh, tests in Joomla and see what they do. And 
basically uh, the this PHP uh, PHP unit file what does is tell uh, create a constant that will reference our local clone of Joomla then it defines a, a test thread suite and then it tells which files are we going to test so this is the folder that we will test uh, also if you ha want to create a coverage report which is important to see how much of your code is tested or uh, for automatic things like scrutinizer or art tools that we create a page a batch for you in github to say uh, the 80 percent of your code is covered by tests or maybe the 100 100 percent that and this is a uh, sample uh, coverage report you will see that those are the methods of this uh, this is one class and those are the methods and the lines that they have which one of them are covered and I hope that you only have 100% uh, of coverage. That's the idea with test-driven development. This is the bootstrap file. I will send you later the full uh, test folder structure, so it's not so confusing. This is just a PHP, PHP file that resides in uh, test bootstrap. And what it does is to load the, the Joomla uh, test the, the Joomla repository bootstrap file, then creates a constant to our test folder to reference it later, and then just loads the the composer stuff and our uh, extension loader. I'm going to show you the extension loader because I haven't show, shown that. I find this is uh, interesting because most of the people ask me, how do I use namespaces in Joomla extensions? And uh, uh, it's the same that I told you uh, before. You only have to create, really the only important thing is the autoload PSR4 in the last line of the, of the file. That we uh, load that namespace in the, S in the source folder of our extension, which is this one. It's a small, but this one is the, the folder that will load our namespace. So the rest is a uh, Joomla module, as you know it, most of the time, but I only use uh, namespaces, so. Then, uh, if you collaborate with in, in the project with other people, uh, most of the people will have uh, uh, the Joomla clone in a different folder, or maybe they need more stuff, or some need to run uh, uh, coverage, coverage reports, or others don't. So uh, if you use Git and co collaborate with others, this is the one, the things you have to add to Git ignore. And this is the full test uh, as folder structure. This is my suggestion. It's not something official or things like you don't need to follow this pattern, but I found that it was helping me to my glo my main idea was to have everything test related inside the test folder. So there are the test coverage, the database stuff that stuff that we will see later. And then staffs the test. This is the folder that would actually uh, store our test and our bootstrap file that we created previously. So with that, with uh, maybe a bit confusing, but it's just four files. Well, four stage stages, and it's clone, create the composer JSON file, create the bootstrap file, and run composer. Run composer. It's quite easy. You don't need to be Einstein or a monkey. But uh, then we have the question. That's those are the barriers that we find when we we want to start writing tests. That oh, but there are uh, unit tests. There are integration tests. There are acceptance tests. What are we going to write? So, for Joomla development, uh, 
I found you, you can actually write tests like testing the full interface, which will be acceptance. That's from a user point of view, this is what I is going to happen. Uh, but here are we going to focus in unit test, which is testing the a smaller part of our class or extension, and then integrity on tests that take those units and uh, test uh, a more real workflow of the of the extension. And uh, there is a a good uh, quote from Guillermo Rout that is white tests not too many and mostly integration. That's uh, was very popular in React world, and I think it's cool because uh, we tend, as developers, we tend to to write a lot of unit tests, which is cool. Uh, if you're writing a library, but if you're wi we're writing an extension, you need to test uh, a, dat a database query, and abstracting that makes you that you are really really does you are really testing the extension. With integration, we find a way to really run queries against the database and mix things as they will work. This is our first test. Is uh, it will be in, in the repository? Is there? Uh, the repository contains a lot of more tests, so you can see uh, uh, how to do more complex things. But this is this is the first stage. We want to see oh how I will use a, a module to display Joomla articles. And OK, I will create a articles module class and pass the params, which is the module settings, and then uh, run it, uh, execute whatever I need for it. The first step will be uh, I'm, I am storing the, those params. And if we were purist, we were uh, splitting this into, into tests. One for storing the params and one to read the params. But in three lines, I can test everything. It's like an integration test that I can test that params are really set in the module, and then I can get them and are the same that I have passed. So this is our first test. Do we not have any code? This is just the, the, the how we expect to use the code that we haven't written. And uh, it's important that all the te all the uh, f the features are starting with a failing test because we don't have the code. If your test isn't failing, there is a problem. So execute the test, ensure that it fails, and then create the code. This is actually uh, not a good first step because uh, I wanted to show that in three lines you can test a lot of code, but uh, this is the minimum. Uh, code to provide what was in the previous test, which is a constructor that sets the params and then a method to retrieve the params. So uh, we could have just tested the constructor that is setting the params and then another method to, to test that we can retrieve the params. Uh, executing that test <laughs> worked, it. so we are very happy, happy monkeys. And then we will, we will iterate uh, to improve that, that test. Now we have the module already works, it's params. Now I want to do the main action that is actually uh, retrieving the, the articles. So I'm retrieving the articles and setting and ensuring that I get an array and uh, that uh, array contains uh, articles. How will we? Uh, will Code, write the minimum code to satisfy the previous uh, uh, test will be to create a, f a fake array with the articles that we would like to know. The test driven, uh, test -driven development purist will tell you that this is okay, but as I told you uh, before, uh, I'm here to save time. So if I know that this is not going to work for me, I will go for the complex. Ah, complex qu uh, between codes, quotes. This will be the what I will do. Instead of creating a fake array and then I iterate, iterating, I am going to directly select all the articles from the uh, content table and then return the result. So if we do this, 
and we test this, we will save time, really. Because I don't have to write a method to then change it again, change it again, until I get there. Uh, what I told you before is that uh, it's better for me to directly do uh, as much as possible. The test need to test uh, as much as possible the real behavior of your extension. So instead of creating uh, uh, mocks for queries, ensuring that the query is what we want, no. I want to really create a set of fake articles, which this, these two lines uh, are come directly from Joomla. Joomla is already already has those CSV files, so uh, I'm just adding a new a new CSV file that Joomla doesn't have to create my own data set. That's my uh, the, the content of the database that I want to test the behavior. And that's the, the loading of the, the CSV files. And then I, we have the, you can also load if Joomla doesn't have a, a, a Joomla in the test when you use the class, uh, I think I missed that. Uh, the first thing is that you extend the test case database. That means that we, Joomla will provide for us a, data, a fake database, uh, which is uh, SQL light to create the, to run the, the queries against it, and then fill it with data. And then uh, if Joomla is not creating, for example, Joomla cur currently in the test is not creating the content tag map table. So I have to create, if you use this uh, set setup before class, uh, is, ex uh, is where Joomla already creates all the schema, the schema, and uh, what we are doing is, okay, after Joomla is creating all the tables, I will create my own for my test. And uh, then you have uh, uh, tests have a specific methods, which are for setup. Setup is the method that will run before any, any test is executed. So this is setup, and if you are uh, running database queries, you probably will end using something like this. And then there is a teardown method, which is uh, to do a clean up after the test is executed. So the next test uh, gets a clean, uh, a clean uh, environment. Uh, th those are uh, for database tests, but then uh, we have to test other things. And I will try to save you time. This is an example when you have uh, a function that is supposed to retrieve, to retrieve the limit from a module setting. The module setting has a param that is uh, limit. I will show you. There is a limit setting here. And what I'm testing there is that the the limit in a in a method with the name limit in my class is returning the expected limit from the user settings. Uh, to save time, I will I could create these five lines and then I and pass null to ensure that is loading the default limit. Then pass one to ensure that is loading one. Then try a lot of things, but uh, PHP unit includes a thing called data provider, which is, uh, is, is not seen, but yeah, with, with a special tag, you can tell uh, PHP unit that this method is going to be filled with data coming from another method in the same class. So that's the function that is going to be called, and the function could be something like this. This is the, it returns an array, and each of one line, each of uh, one of these lines, is going to be the parameters for the other method, the previous method. Is this is passing a limit 24, and ensuring that the result is 24. This is going to send an empty space, and see, ensure that it uses the default limit. So it's trying to break my own code, which is a funny uh, game and then ensuring that nobody is going to have a strange behavior uh, just playing with the, with the settings. And 
as I told you before, this is testing seven lines, seven possibilities. Instead of writing seven per uh, five, you will have 35 lines of code with a data provider. We only need to send an array, and the same function will test everything. Uh, what's the, the time? As I told you before, uh, we can reuse our, our code to set up Travis. I think I'm going to skip this, because as I told you, this is a game, or I, I will expect it to be a game. And when you see the screens of, uh, of World of Warcraft, or it's not the same that playing the game. So let's get full and try to do some testing in life. It's probably going to. <laughs> explode, but let's use it. So this is the previous class, the the class that uh, that I created with the previous test. This is articles module, and it already has a lot of things. But uh, my goal, as I told you before, was to create a a replacement, create a articles module that could replace all the Joomla mod articles archive, mod articles categories, category letters, news, popular. So I, well, I have to give two sessions at JAP. The I have to talk about this and about TIG. So I found that I could create a, an extension using TIG and test. So this is it. And I have added a, a lot of things to it already, but I'm sh uh, I think I didn't add uh, an option to filter articles by author, for example. So let's add it. And the first thing will be to write our test. And let's name it articles, returns, articles from a specified author. And I will call it like module, well, new articles module. And uh, I have to give it params that will be like the, the, the author filter I want to send it. So let's say it author equals to two, for instance. And then I'm going to get the articles. with the articles model uh, method. And then I supposed to have that in the articles variable. Variable I am supposed to I'm supposed to have the articles. So I'm going just uh, uh, for each articles as article. And ensure that the author is the the one we expected. Assert uh, PHP unit, if you don't know it, has a lot of methods to assert things. This is basically what we do. We assert that a variable has the same value that another one, which is uh, useful to test objects. This is the same objects as we did with the parameters. Then I said that it's true, that it's not empty. So uh, uh, I found that anything that you can imagine exists. So you assert instance of this works. So I'm going to assert that two is the article author. Author? What's the name in the database? Create, created by, I think, yeah, created by. Created by. So this will be our code. And of course, it's going to fail. Yeah, it fails. And uh, what's the error? The error says that asserting that two these things are identical, so it's different, obviously. And uh, because it's, uh, it's not uh, returning the, the, the filter data. So I'm going to create here, to, to create here the, the filter. This is the, the method that loads our articles. So let's do something like, something fast. Probably wasting a lot of time, but authors. I'm going to do something like this, params, 
get the name that we gave to the parameter was author, author, so author. And yeah, and let's get mad and allow that it's an array of data. So we can filter for more than one author and name it author IDs, authors IDs. Yeah, and if we have authors, Then let's create a filter for our query, like uh, the, the same as here. This is remember that this is the our first iteration, iteration. So uh, created by is the same uh, authors like this. Let's run the the test. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it's working on live. Uh, but you see that this it was a fast test. Then I could uh, do something. I, ha I still have time, I think. So I, let's go. Uh, I like to test things isolat in a isolated way. So you see that when I'm getting the tax IDs, I'm using a protected method. So I can create a data provider for it and ensure that for any author's ID, author's parameters value, it will work. So let's create a author method. Let's test it first. Remember that we first run, uh, create the the method, the test. Sorry. So let's create the test. Okay. It's author authors IDs is the name of the method. Returns expected values. This way, uh, I will be able to also escape data because we are creating a database query, so it's safe to escape data. Um, and let's use it like uh, module. Oh no, sorry. I'm going to use a data provider, so it's going to be like this method, uh, writing a creating a data provider and get the params of the module and see what expected value I I have for the for the method, so we will create a author side this author side this provider, author side this provider, and then have the params that I'm going to receive and the expected value. And for is is almost the same code if you see like this, uh, the method will be prepaid in in those three lines. What we are doing is to create a with reflection class. What we what uh, PHP allows you to get an instance of that class. Oh. What magic? PHP allows you to create uh, an instance of that class and uh, change if it's a protected function, protect protected method. You can make it accessible, so we can invoke it later in, in our tests. So let's copy paste, which is the best thing ever. And our method is named authors IDs, and the param is is the same. So we are just just missing the provider, which is like another the li limit provider. Let's create it up here. Uh, provider, and it will return an array. And for authors like this test. And this will return an array. Uh, okay, let's start the party here. This will be the first element of our, this will be the params that it will reside. Uh, ah, this is the full arguments, it's an array with the full arguments. So we have to create an array inside an array and then uh, get the expected value. I'm going to send it, uh, say that I expect value two for the, for the order, for the authors ID, and uh, sorry, an array of authors, and I'm going to send here, send here. Yeah, this is easy. Uh, sorry, this is author. The author parameter will have a value of two. Okay. 
and I haven't executed the test, which is actually wrong, but let's do it. This is the, the test and fails because the method author's ID, is, is the author's ID does not exist. Let's create it. It's going to be quite similar to categories ID, which is what we did previously. So let's copy paste and call it author's IDs. And this is the parameter that is going to get this author uh, of authors to show. Okay, let's execute the test again. And it already works. Uh, it's incredible to test working coded in a leaf session. So we can get mad now that we have the harder part. We can start trying to break our own code, which is a funny game. Let's give. I'm going to say the the one of the expected things is that uh, someone passes a and uh, settings are still aren't still set, so it's going to be a no author filter. Let's see if it works. Yep. Then we can test maybe someone is trying to hack us and do something like this, or uh, someone is able to enter in the in the field an ID because it's a text field and do something like this. But if you uh, with with PHP, if you cast the data to integer, it will remove all the spaces. So 34 is going to be converted to 34 in integer, the casted value. Let's run it, and it's OK. So this is an example of how do could you start waiting things. Like, I think that you see that this method is hard, that some sometimes we got uh, uh, the wrong author ID, because all the possibilities are, are tested, and it's really fun to try to break them. So, if we run the, the if we run the full test time, test suite. Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope it uh, helps to understand the methodology that you have to follow, and it's. Once you have the 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 setting, the Joomla clone, the composer JSON file, the Bootstrap file, it's quite easy, and it, it will work for all your extensions. So it's probably the best time you have invested. It's not like uh, uh, Ron and, and I we were work talking yesterday about Docker, things like uh, all of us want to learn things like Docker, or background, uh, whatever. And uh, uh, learning uh, test is the you can learn it and have enough to work like this in one week. It's the best week you you will invest in your career, so do it. And also, as I told you, you can set up Travis, which is uh, if we have a repository, an online repository, and people contribute, nobody contributes. Uh, in, in my case. I have a, a Virtual Studio extension, and yesterday it was like 50,000 installs and zero pull requests and 50 issues. <laughs> Everybody wants features, but nobody contributes. So, uh, And I don't use Virtual Studio anymore, so uh, I, well. Uh, this is the, the, the file that you have to put in your repository is uh, .travis. Yam is a file that will, uh, when you connect to Travis.com or .org, and now are they are the same, uh, Travis will uh, connect to your repository. I'm going to show it. We have time. It's cool. I'm going to show it actually with a real repository. Joomla 2. The funny part is that uh, I actually found a couple of books this morning <laughs> writing tests for a, an extension that is using this uh, this code. So when you connect uh, Travis, it will show something like, most of you will already know it, but 
I'm asking with this. I'm passing test in three versions of PHP. I'm testing that it works in PHP 7, PHP 7.1, and PHP 7.2. You could just test it in PHP 5 if you want. And it's running a lot of things that is basically setting an environment to run our, to run our test. So the best thing is that I your repository, when somebody uh, creates a pull request for you, you have an indicator that says, uh, don't merge this because it's going to break your code. I'm going to do the font size here. Um, to do that, we ha you only have to add a Travis file here. And it's an automatic way that Travis will uh, understand that he has to connect the repository. This is the file, the content of the file in my case. As you see, it's, it's really easy. It's, it's incredible that we are not spending more time on this. Uh, it's just setting the required PHP versions, the branches I'm going to use, and then the setup of the, of the test and the script that will execute our test. And you may think that those files are big, but no, they are also small. This is the test setup, which is really cloning a website and install uh, the composer dependencies in on that side, and then uh, uh, install installing the dependencies of our extension. And the rest of the th those lines actually are from my Gulp integration, which is not related at all of up with this. So it's the test setup is five lines. Yeah, five lines. Actually, three real lines of code. And then what uh, executes the test is the same. It's running PHP code style, uh, which is because I also check code style. And so it's one line, really. Uh, uh, PHP unit, what the test are exactly the last line. So with one line, you get your test execute in all your pull requests. And this is the PHP unit that is using uh, Travis, which is a different one, but mainly because I have to switch the, the destination of the Joomla folder. It's almost the same that I use locally with the repositories, and it also helps me to, I'm not sure if you know things like scrutinizer, or I'm going to show you. With a scrutinizer. A scrutinizer, sorry. <laughs> so when you when you submit uh, when you add code to your extension, it automatically uh, checks if you have done. Uh, I'm going to see if I added, yeah. I added here one issue or hit or so. I didn't add it, but on this, it tells you that your code smells because it's uh, it needs to be uh, the, uh, the it also compares the, the classes of two more objects and ensures that you are not introducing any any bug there are also more complex things which is things that I'm using now this is sonar cloud uh, I'm going to use it here project in Sonar Cloud. This is what Sonar Cloud does for you. It tells you how many lines, it, uh, this is free, so you don't have to pay anything. It tells you how many books do you have in your code, and I did nothing, but I ha you have to execute one line of, of uh, in the terminal, and everything gets connected. How many uh, unit tests, how the coverage, and you also set uh, in, uh, in the scrutinizer, you have a set of rules that are uh, tested with your code, but here, you have also, you set a limit, so you can say, uh, a pull request can add uh, like 50 lines, but 50% uh, has to be uh, tested. So it's cool. And with that, that's all. Uh, ah, there are questions. Yeah, I'm going to upload my, my slides and send a tweet later, maybe with the tag of the of the of the the and beyond. And yeah, I, I I always publish them in the slide share. So yes. Then how do you integrate this in your development workflow? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, everything I, I write is uh, fully connected. So before I have a like a uh, a project uh, project setup, which I use for all my extensions. So I have the uh, the Gulp stuff, the uh, test, the extension. I always use the same uh, uh, folder structure with the same things. I always use uh, Sonar Cloud now. But before I was using uh, Scrutinizer. So it's uh, reusing the same, which is the cheapest thing to maintain. Uh, for all my extensions, I use the same. And I actually uh, use Gulp for building, uh, for compiling things like uh, JavaScript files and things like that. And I, th I am willing to learn Webpack. But I, Webpack is it the, the new cool thing out there. But I, yeah, so I, I, I don't want to learn it because I know that next year something will, yeah, and the front end stuff is crazy, so I stay, if it works, I don't fix it. And why PHP uh, 4.8, I, I told it yet before, it's because Joomla uh, test case database, the base classes that we are using, uh, we don't want to create the, all the, the fake database system that Joomla uses. It's already working in the CMS repository, so let's not reinvent the wheel and use what other smart people did and just connect what we need, see test passing. Anything you create, you will have to maintain it. So I could, uh, the only thing that I regret about using uh, PHP unit dot for eight is that you can actually uh, use, uh, um, I don't know how you say it, the type hinting in, in PHP 7, uh, type hinting, sorry. So uh, type hinting doesn't work if you mock uh, a protecting method. John La, uh, PHP unit uh, dot four eight is, is not supporting that. So it's, it's going to give an error because the class declaration are not the same. Yeah, we need that the Joomla CMS repository fixes things, and we, uh, yeah, and then we ch we update our code to make it working with the latest version. If it works and you have a setup that with uh, in you have you can set up in 15 minutes, going to make it harder. Okay, so thank you everybody. I was a bit nervous, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>